Here we're going to look at one category, one type of series that is very significant called a geometric series. We've actually already seen an example of this. The first example we looked at, the series one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth and so on, which we can also write as the series from k equals one to infinity of one over two to the power of k. This is actually a geometric series. The key to a geometric series is that concept of repeated multiplication. So I've listed that up above. Exponents are going to be key to geometric series. So when we see something like 2 to the k, eventually that will be a hint to us that a geometric series is at play here. But notice the pattern here. Each term is the previous term times a half. So if we take a half and multiply times one half, we get one fourth. If we multiply that by a half, we get one eighth. If we multiply that by a half, we get one sixteenth. So whenever you have that pattern, that each term is the same multiple of the one that came before it, that's a geometric series. So that's what I mean when I say repeated multiplication. If there's a common multiple value that you can multiply each term to get the next term, that's a geometric series. So in this example, if we multiply any term by one half, that will give us the next term, the one that follows it in the series. So the common multiple here is one half. Let me show you another example before I write this in a slightly different form. Something like four minus four thirds plus four ninths minus four over 27 plus four over 81, etc. Think about what happens each time. We have four, if we multiply that by negative one third, that gives us negative four thirds. If we multiply that by negative one third, we get four ninths positive. If we multiply that by negative one third, we get negative four over 27 and so on. So here the common multiple is negative one third. So really all you need is the first two terms to find that common multiple because whatever you have to multiply the first one by to get the second one, or in other words, the second term divided by the first term is the common multiple. And then you can just verify using the following terms to make sure you got it right. So the key to a geometric series is what that common multiple is. The way I'm going to write this first example, the one over two to the power of k, I'm going to write it a little bit differently. Instead of writing one over two to the power of k, I'm going to write one half times one half to the power of k minus one. Now you should be able to pause here and do a little bit of quick algebra and verify that that is equal to one over two to the power of k. Why did I write it the way I wrote it? The way I wrote it is a more standard form for a geometric series because it picks out the two important pieces to this structure. The most important piece to a geometric series is this common multiple, which is a half. And that's what's listed right here. Each term is the previous term times a half. Let me show you on this second example before I continue. The second one I would write as four times negative one third to the k minus one. Notice that the common multiple negative one third is what's being raised to the power of k minus one. So in both cases, if you write it in this standard form, you can quickly pick out what that common multiple is, and that again is one of the most significant pieces to a geometric series. The other value, think about this one half here and the four on the second example, that value will be whatever the first term in the series is. Notice that the first term here is a half and the first term in the second example is four. So by writing a geometric series in this more standard form, we immediately know what the first term in the series is, 
and then what each term needs to be multiplied by to give us the following term. So looking at this and reading 1 half times 1 half to the k minus 1, I immediately know the first term is going to be 1 half, then the next one will be that times a half, 1 fourth, and the next one will be 1 eighth, and so on. And the same thing on the second one, I know the first term will be 4, and then each term will be the previous one times negative one third. So the standard form for a geometric series, there's a couple of ways to write it. You can either write something like I did here, the series from k equals one to infinity of a times r to the k minus one. So a in that second example would be four and r would be negative one third. Or you might see it written some places with k starting at zero, and then you have a times r to the k. Those are identical, there's no, no difference between the final result. It's just a notational thing, whether you start with k equals one or k equals zero. Our textbook tends to start with k equals zero for most series, so I'll stick with that, and I'll generally write this first version with the k minus one term. So if you write out the first few terms, the first term will always be a, the next one will be a times r to the one, then a times r to the two, and so on. So a is the first term, that's the first value, and r is the common multiple. So you multiply each term by r to get the next one. So here when we're talking about geometric series, when we use a, we use that to mean the first term in the series. When we use r, we use that to mean the common multiple that you use to build one term from the previous one. It turns out for a geometric series that whether a geometric series converges or diverges depends only on the value of r. So for a geometric series specifically, the convergence and divergence depends only on the value of r. If it converges, a has an impact on what it converges to, but if it converges, you can change the value of a and it will always converge. If it diverges, you can change the value of a and it will always diverge, assuming a is finite, of course. Now it turns out the key is pretty simple, surprisingly simple, and we're going to verify this in a minute, but it turns out that if the absolute value of r is less than one, strictly less than one, this geometric series will converge. And specifically, we can tell what it converges to. It converges to the value of a divided by one minus r. I mentioned earlier that for most series, we won't actually figure out what they converge to. We'll just know whether they converge or not. Geometric series is one example where we can find, if we know it converges, we can find what it converges to. The other side of this is that if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to one, then it diverges. And the reasoning behind that isn't too hard to observe. If the absolute value of r is less than one, as you multiply terms one after another, your terms are going to get smaller and smaller relatively quickly which kind of leads us down that path to seeing how it could converge. It's not a proof, but at least it seems reasonable. But the other side of the coin, if r equals one, then each term is going to be equal to the one that came before it. And if you're adding up a bunch of equal finite values, there's no way that doesn't diverge. So that has to diverge if r equals one. Or if it equals negative one, then think about what happens. The terms go from positive to negative of the same value. So you'll be like something like adding one plus negative one plus positive one plus negative one and so on. And that never settles down to anything. 
the answer bounces back and forth between 0 and 1 in that example. And then if r is greater than 1 in absolute value, then your terms are getting larger as you go. So again, it's impossible for it to converge. Now I'm going to show you a quick quasi proof for the first statement there that if the absolute value of r is less than 1, then this converges. And I'm leaving out a few complications. So it's not a full and thorough proof, but it's decent for our purposes. Again, this is one of those things that if you don't follow it and it doesn't seem clear, you can skip over it. Uh, it's not crucial that we be able to repeat this, but I think it's good for you to see where these things come from. So basically we'll say if r is not equal to 1, then we can take the first few terms of this series as many as we'd like, up to some value k, and we'll call this s sub k. So that's the sequence of partial sums up to the value k. And then from that, we're going to subtract r times itself. So if we multiply r by that sum, we'll have a r is the first term, a r squared, a r to the third, and so on. Notice that each term has just gone up by one power of r. So then if we subtract that, notice what happens. a r cancels, a r squared cancels, a r to the third cancels. Everything's going to cancel, including a r to the k minus one. And all that will be left is a minus a r to the k. And then notice that we can factor out s k on the left side and we can factor out an a on the right side. And we can divide both sides by one minus r, keeping in mind that this s sub k is that sequence of partial sums we talked about earlier. So that's what you get if you add up a finite number of terms. And then if we want the full series, what we need to do is let k go to infinity. So as k goes to infinity, what happens to this sequence of partial sums? Then we're basically asking the question, what happens to this here? And that answer depends on the value of r. If the absolute value of r is less than 1, then r to the power of k, as k goes to infinity, r to the power of k is getting smaller and smaller, and it turns out to go to 0. And if it does, that whole term, a times 1 minus r to the k over 1 minus r, goes to a over 1 minus r. If the absolute value of r is greater than 0, that thing diverges again. So that's where these conclusions come from. And again, there's some details that I skimmed over here, but very briefly, that's a simple proof for why this works for the most part. So again, if the proof didn't make a lot of sense, that's okay. That's not something you need to be able to repeat, but the conclusion is what you need to be able to recognize. Look at a geometric series, you need to be able to find whether it converges or diverges, and if it converges, you should know what it converges to.